Well, the U.S. is now leaking to Politico, uh, which is a, an, you know, an establishment favored publication. This is not like, you know, Zero Hedge is putting this out. Politico is reporting a 100,000 Ukrainian soldiers have been killed so far uh, in the war with Russia. Now, I don't know whether to still call this an under, uh, you know, an underestimate or if it's accurate, but either way, it's a really bad number. A hundred thousand. That's more men than the, than the U.S. lost in Vietnam. Wasn't Vietnam like 70, 90,000, somewhere in there? There was a lot of guys that died in Vietnam. Um, but they didn't all die in one year. <laughs> and so... What that says to me is that um, Ukraine has not really been a holding on well. It's not, you know, because I've been saying for the you know past year or so um, that I'm surprised that Ukraine's been able to hold out, which I was because I thought, you know, hey, Ukraine's a big or a tiny country. Russia's a big country. Uh, obviously, Russia's just going to march right all over them if Russia decides to invade Ukraine. Um, you know, they uh, Putin could be in Kiev by the end of the week. I don't think I ever actually said that, but had somebody said that, I wouldn't have, um, I wouldn't have looked at them, uh, you know, with uh, uh, with a stink eye or something. That would have probably sounded reasonable to me, and I think to a lot of people at the start of this war. Uh, but uh, the uh, regime in Kiev is still in place now, over one year later. But at what cost? Apparently at the cost of at least 100,000 Ukrainian men, including, I'm sure, all of their, you know, their, their guys who were uh, their well-trained tr troops at the start of the war. All those guys are probably dead. Uh, the guys who were the standing army uh, before all this went down. And so all the people that are, you know, they're sending into battle now, I would imagine, are like, you know, the third string conscripts. And so... I don't, I wouldn't call that a win. I wouldn't say, oh, you know, Ukraine's been holding their own. If they've lost 100,000 men, um, that just to me says that they're using uh, their, um, the young men of their nation as human shields. You know, they're not defending anything if you lose 100,000 men in one year. That to me uh, says that Ukraine is holding on uh, and refusing to surrender in battles that they have lost over the years. Now, I'm not saying any uh, people talk a lot about Bakhmut. I think that's how you say it. And how, uh, you know, the we, you know, I, all the time you hear about the Russians going like, oh, we're, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're kicking Ukraine's ass in Bakhmut. And then, you know, here we are months later and Bakhmut still was, still hadn't fallen. And I don't know, maybe the, uh, the Ukrainians have finally pulled out of there by now. But that's just an example of, that's probably um, one of these areas where that 100,000 body count came from. Um, because the Ukrainians probably were losing, and the Russians probably were thinking, hey, we're kicking their ass. Look at all these soldiers we're killing. And the Ukrainians just refused to pull out, and they just kept putting in more and more guys um, to, to walk into, uh, you know, uh, into no man's land, basically. And so if you had reasonable people who um, believed in, uh, you know, not taking unnecessary losses... Um, and minimizing casualties, Ukraine probably would have been defeated a long time ago and surrendered. But if you don't treat your soldiers, um, most of whom you know, are conscripts who did not sign up to be in the military, if you just treat those men as cannon fodder, uh, then you, know, you could probably hang on for a bit longer. After all, there are tens of millions of people, I believe, that live in Ukraine. So there's, you know, if they conscript men up to age like 40, let's say, um, they probably uh, could uh, rip through a lot of bodies uh, before they run out. I mean, how many men uh, could there be? You know, age eight, uh, well, I think they're drafting now down as young as 15 from what I've heard. So let's say age 15 to maybe 50. Um, you know, when you're in desperate times, that's got to be a lot of men uh, in Ukraine. I would think that's at least in the millions, um, a pool of men that they have to pull from. And if they've only lost 100,000, if you think of it in that, if you just think that all of those men are expendable and, um, and that you have access to millions 
of bodies. Well, a hundred thousand might not sound like a lot. Um, you might think from that perspective that, hey, we can go on for a few more years without having to worry. Because look at all these bodies that we still have, uh, you know, left in reserve. You know, if um, uh, if they've got, you know, a few million rounds at the start of the war um, of 7.62 by 54R on belts, you know, for their machine guns, and they and a year later they've only ripped through 100,000 of those rounds, uh, if I were the Ukrainians, I would say, well, gee, we got plenty of ammo. We can keep going on for a few more years. And perhaps that is how the regime in Kiev views uh, it's fighting age male population. Of course, we're going to have to put fighting age kind of in quotes because I think most people think of fighting age, you know, 18 to 40 max. I mean, really, 40 is pushing it. But, uh, you know, if you're conscripting down to 15 and all the way up to 50, um, um, I think what goes without saying is that Ukraine, even if it continues to exist, um, its demographics will be screwed up for generations. And we know what that did to Britain after World War One. I. I mean, Britain uh, pretty much ceased to exist. Um, it is a shell of its former self. I mean, yes, there is still an island called Great Britain, um, but but it's no longer the Great Britain of, uh, of uh, Queen Victoria. That country, that empire, they're never coming back. That nation, that spirit, they're gone forever. In Ukraine, their most virile and patriotic men have already been slain. Even if things were to end right now and they were to start rebuilding, uh, who's going to rebuild? Who's left? Or, you know, what? what's a better question is who's missing? How many um, potentially great minds and productive citizens, you know, have been lost in this conflict? Think of the loss of human capital. But perhaps they don't view uh, their population as capital goods. Perhaps they view them purely as uh, expendable goods. Lives to be consumed by the war machine. I mean, just look at the Ukrainian Air Force. Now apparently they're going to be getting MiG-29s from Poland. Um, and you might be asking yourself, gee, what happened to all of Ukraine's uh, MiGs and um no, what would they have? Su twenty fives, probably. Um, what happened to all those planes? Well, every single one of Ukraine's planes apparently have been shot out of the sky, or else they would need to go begging to Poland and uh, eventually the United States uh, for fighter jets. So what are they going to do? They're going to send up more pilots, and they're going to get shot down just like the ones before them. Um, you know, if Ukraine was doing well, they would not need all these new planes because. You know, they would be shooting down more Russians, um, you know, than, than they are getting shot down themselves. I mean, what are they going to do? Are they going to fly these planes uh, across the Russian border and, you know, kamikaze into um, uh, buildings or something? What difference are these next few uh, jets that are going to get blown out of the sky? What difference are they going to make that hasn't been made by all the jets that have already been blown out of the sky? Where's the hope here? What is the point in resistance? I don't want to sound cliche, but at this point, is resistance not futile? Obviously, I, you know, I'm in a position where I can be glib about this because I'm not living through it. Um, but that's pre precisely why I'm able to have a um, a rational and sane perspective on this because I'm not affected by the emotions of someone living there. You know, if you're living through this hell, which is exactly what war is, you can't think rationally. Um, I mean, you can, but you probably won't because you, uh, you know, have, uh, you know, as much of a bias on trying to analyze the situation as anyone possibly could. Your life literally depends on it, and that puts a lot of strain on people. And so it is us outsiders. Uh, who are not affected by the conflict directly, um, you know, who can have, uh, you know, the most um, lucid perspective. And so if you can't um, uh, articulate a path to victory, why keep fighting? Because all you're going to do is lose more. If at the end of the day, Putin, Putin, 
um, is able to, you know, get achieve whatever his goals are in Ukraine. Um, wouldn't it be reasonable to say we, Ukraine would have been better off um, had it just surrendered to begin with, and uh, you know, not put up all this resistance, or maybe not put up as you know as much, and not exhaust, not wasted the lives of these one hundred thousand men? Wouldn't Ukraine be better off even if they were in a bad state because you know they lost to Russia? If these hundred thousand men were still alive, I'm not here to paint the Ruskies as good guys. Killing a hundred thousand people uh, in a war is not something to be proud of. You know, um, when the U.S. talks, you know, even in school when they teach us about war and why we should love America's wars, you know, they don't tell us how many. <laughs> Um, uh, how many of the other guys uh, our soldiers killed? They never teach us how many Germans died in World War II, or how many um, Germans died in World War I, or how many Japanese died in World War II. They teach us how many Americans died in each of these wars. They don't tell us how many Vietnamese died in, in the Vietnam War. They don't tell us how many Iraqis died in the Iraq War. Apparently it was around a million. Um, they tell us how many Americans died in each of these wars. Because that's how you gain sympathy. It sounds real sad when you say, you know, oh, 3,500 Americans were killed in Iraq. Um, you know, and you go, oh, boo-hoo, that's so sad. I feel so terrible for their families. And then, you know, but if, if you juxtapose that to say, well, a million Iraqis were killed in the same war, <laughs> then it's really hard to cry about the 3,500 Americans, especially when the Americans are the ones that started the fight. So I don't think that the Ruskies are going to go around bragging and saying, yeah, we, we slaughtered a million of those Ukrainian pigs. But nevertheless, as a third party outsider, I can look at that and say, that to me seems like an indicator that the Ruskies are um, more effective in this war than the Ukrainians. Because what is war about at the end of the day? It's about uh, the goal in war is to kill the other guy faster than he kills you. And hopefully if you do that to such a degree, to such an extreme degree, the other guy will uh, surrender. You know, that was the whole point of uh, the uh, dropping the atomic bombs on Japan. Let's just massacre hundreds of thousands of Japanese all at once so that the Japanese, you know, realize, okay, resistance is futile and we're just going to completely surrender. Of course, in reality, um, the Japanese were going to surrender anyway, uh, but the U.S. wanted, a, wanted a, a better negotiating position. They didn't want to negotiate at all. They wanted the Japanese to just say, we're at your mercy. And so that's why they killed hundreds of thousands of uh, Japanese men, women, and children and wiped out, you know, two historic cities and left, you know, however many thousands more uh, with um, uh, lifelong disabilities and uh, cancer uh, and uh, whatever terrible side effects of the radiation. That wasn't a secure uh, um, uh, surrender in the war at all. That was just a negotiating point. That's all that was. Now, Putin, on the other hand, I think if the Ukrainians wanted to even negotiate a surrender, I think the Ruskies would be all about that. You know, the unconditional surrender thing is a weird cult um, in American military history. Um, you know, it's kind of like the whole we don't negotiate with terrorists thing. America doesn't negotiate with anybody. But the Ruskies do. In fact, they had negotiated a peace deal with uh, Ukraine early on in this war, like March of last year. And uh, uh, what do you know? Uh, Ukraine, at the behest of its um, uh, Western benefactors, uh, decided to call off the peace talks. Now, as the war has gone, dragged on, Ukraine has less and less to bargain with. Ukraine's position has only gotten weaker. Even if they've maintained um, you know, their ter uh, a lot of their same territory, um, Losing all these soldiers, Ukraine is weaker. It has less of an ability to um, uh, to continue the fight. And so uh, the, the longer they wait to come to the negotiating table, the more Russia is going to be able to extract from them uh, because the Ruskies will know how painful uh, the war has already been for Ukraine and what shape they're in to continue. And 
the truth of the matter is they're, they're in no shape at all to continue the war if they've lost 100,000 soldiers. So it's a real tragedy, but again, I, I hope it ends at some point. I mean, the sooner the better, because the longer they wait, the worse things are going to be for Ukraine. They're not turning, th you know, things are not moving in the other direction. It's not like you lose 100,000 soldiers and then you turn the tide of the war. Um, because, sure, we don't know how many soldiers the Ruskies have lost. Um, I haven't seen real accurate data on that. And I haven't, you know, if you notice, I haven't been talking about Ukrainian body counts or Russian body counts until now. Because I just, when you have one side admit what their casualties are and it's a bad side, and it's a bad number, you know, that to me has a bit of credibility. Um, if the Americans are saying that Ukraine lost 100,000 soldiers, I think it's pretty safe to say Ukraine lost at least 100,000 soldiers. Um, you know, that's different than if the, what the Ruskies say the Ukrainians lost. That, you know, obviously the, the Russians are biased. Or if the Ukrainians tell you, um, you know, oh, we only lost 10,000 soldiers and, and Russia has lost 150,000. You know, that's also not credible. So anyway, I'll, I'll link to uh, the political article. And uh, uh, with that said, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.